9-11 based on the collapse of the Twin Towers and Building 7. If I may ask y'all in the audience today, can I have a show of hands? How many of you are familiar with this information already? Okay, and a show of hands, how many people are not familiar with any of this information? Okay, well just a couple, so you're definitely gonna have some good time here. There's so much information to learn. Uh, the thing is, if you look at international news and international media, there is a lot of coverage of this topic. But when you come uh, abroad home in the USA, you find no coverage of uh, this information, this evidence that architects and engineers have actually uncovered. So when the Architects and Engineers Organization had a big press conference in San Francisco a couple weeks back, they encouraged cities all across the USA to have similar press conferences. And it is a couple weeks later, but this is our press conference for the Texas Architects and Engineers to announce that this a milestone of over now 1,100 architects and engineers that have signed the petition. So the numbers are growing. This movement is gaining speed, it's gaining momentum, and it's growing stronger each and every day. And as we continue on, we're going to find you shouldn't be surprised if we do actually get a new investigation. If you look at the work of uh, NYC CAN in New York City with over 80,000 petition signers just in New York City alone. And now you look what they're doing in New Hampshire with over 12 cities trying very hard to get a new investigation on the ballot. So I really want to encourage you all to, to know and picture that it is the reality that we are eventually going to get a new investigation. And it's thanks, thanks to the, uh, the work of the architects and engineers who are really paving the way when it comes to this uh, investigation. So I want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, it's going to be a great day. We've got great speakers. We've got great videos. And of course, we've got a great audience, you guys. So I just want to ask you a round of applause for all of you here today. And I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself. I am Matthew Medina with uh, We Are Change San Antonio. We Are Change is a grassroots organization that uh, is doing the work of media, information, education, and events. So that's who I am. And I want to introduce our next guest, who's actually done so much for this uh, pursuit of truth, this pursuit of knowledge and justice, that uh, it's something strong in American roots to have justice. And unfortunately, with the 9-11 first responders, we couldn't even get them medical care. We couldn't serve them justice. It's, it's taken over nine years now for them to even get an offer. So uh, our next guest is someone who's actually speaking about 9-11 before 9-11. He's, he's had the evidence, he's had the documents, and it's now with architects and engineers, we see that the evidence is legit the peer-reviewed journals, peer-reviewed studies, but our next guest was exposed and with the evidence 9-11 before 9-11. Our next guest is a filmmaker, uh, investigative journalist, researcher, uh, producer, international uh, broadcast radio show host. And if I can call him, I think he's the Obi-Wan Kenobi of the InfoWars, Mr. Alex Emrys Jones. challenge the official uh, fable, the conspiracy theory, that is the 9-11 attacks of eight and a half years ago. And the good news is that despite the fact that the mainstream media almost entirely has been ignoring architects and engineers for 9-11 truth, uh, the information just continues to gain ground and radically expand every single day because it was a French philosopher once said that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. And we now see the mainstream media more than ever not just trying to ignore what we actually have to say, but demonizing us. In the last eight years of 9-11 Truth, uh, we see the uh, most expansive attacks and demonization campaigns in our history going on now because we're a danger to the system. It was uh, Mahatma Gandhi uh, that said that first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. And we're really entering that phase where they've tried to ignore us, 
then they tried to laugh at us, now they're attacking us, and we are winning. The problem... The only problem with 9-11 Truth is we have so much evidence, so many facts, so much proof that the official story is alive from one end to the other. I mean, just this week, I could get up here for 30 minutes and speak about uh, the fact that the ACLU got the White House uh, memorandum released from Dick Cheney, the real president at the time, uh, to the 9-11 Commission, which Bush appointed, was never independent, telling them, you will not investigate 9-11. You will not look at the attacks. You will just basically be a propaganda arm to promote national ID cards, naked body scanners, NORTHCOM, and Homeland Security federalizing this country. Now, we had seen some of the 9-11 commissioners in years past say that they were not allowed to look at the attacks when they were asked by family members and others, and we've also seen six of the ten in the Washington Post and other publications say that it was a complete cover-up. We've seen John Farmer, uh, one of the chief counsels, one of the lawyers, uh, in, in a new book that's out, uh, saying that there was a criminal cover-up by the Pentagon. And so that's enough right there to force a new investigation. That's enough information right there uh, to demand a new investigation. But the problem is the government itself is controlled by the very same uh, shadow government, the coup we've had in this country, uh, by the Central Intelligence Agency and others that Ron Paul just a few months ago talked about. He said there's been a coup in America. Uh, really since the time of Kennedy, the people haven't run this nation. And so 9-11 truth is more than just 9-11 truth. It's just the truth. It's the end of innocence, it's, it's people starting to really question, starting to really investigate, starting to become as informed about geopolitical activities, about what the Pentagon's doing, about what the war machine is doing that Eisenhower warned us about in his farewell address as they are informed about baseball or football or what their favorite Hollywood stars are doing. But I go back to the fact that for several weeks there's been a press release out about this event that's going to be running for the next eight hours today, uh, ending with Dr. Bob Bowman uh, breaking down the facts of 9-11. But when you have a thousand architects and engineers come out, they had press conferences a few weeks ago, it made the foreign press, it didn't make the Washington Times, but it didn't get one one hundredth the attention it should have, and that's because the system is deathly afraid of this information, because this information is the truth. And I know there is some mainstream media here and quite a bit of alternative media. I just wanted to start off by making the point that the reason we see the mainstream media literally going bankrupt and newspapers shutting down everywhere and even cable news ratings dropping is because in every poll and every focus group that's been done, the American people do not trust the controlled corporate media. They trust the alternative media a lot more. And so this is the beginning of the end uh, for this military industrial complex. They finally have gone from the uh, previous mode of ignoring us and being full of hubris and calling us tinfoil hat wearers uh, to now openly coming out and saying under the White House cybersecurity plan started by Bush now being forced through Congress, now in the Senate, by Barack Obama, that they will try to shut down the alternative media. You have Cass Sunstein at the White House coming out and writing policy papers on how they should arrest people that have, quote, conspiracy theories about 9-11, or at least license them, or put a special tax on their speech. Uh, you have Reuters yesterday saying, well, they've made a change in the Senate version of the cybersecurity bill. The president can't just unilaterally shut the web off in the Internet if he wants. He has to appoint a council. He appoints a council of corporate chiefs who then make recommendations to him, but the final power lies with the president. Think about how far this country has gone, that the government and the corporate media are now so threatened by alternative information and citizen muckrakers that they are openly now sending up test trial balloons and beta testing the end of the free internet as we know it. They did not intend to do this, 
at this stage. The white papers I've read, they plan to start curtailing the internet in the next five to ten years. Now they're moving their game plan up because they are desperate and they realize that the people are listening. And it's happening because so many wonderfully prominent people have gone public for 9-11 Truth. Former German Defense Minister Andres von Mulow, with the number three in the current uh, Japanese government's 9-11 Truther. I've interviewed him multiple times. He goes into the diet and plays videos of Building 7 collapsing in their Congress, in their Parliament. <laughs> we have people like Dr. Bob Bowman, former head of the Star Wars program and a highly decorated military veteran, a true person of conscience who has been actively crisscrossing the United States and the world exposing 9-11 truth, and thousands of other prominent people. But most importantly, millions and millions and millions of average people that understand the danger. If a criminal group can kill 3,000 of us in broad daylight and suspend the laws of physics and sell this to the people and launch illegal wars and kill over a million Iraqis and lie about WMDs in a premeditated fashion, none of us are safe because this same system is still in control whether we have George Bush, Barack Obama, or somebody like Rick Perry in three years in the White House. Sarah Palin isn't going to save you. Joe Biden isn't going to save you. You are going to save this country and this planet. <laughs> the United States wants the true beacon of liberty and freedom worldwide. The example to other nations has now become an example of corruption and oppression and tyranny. The communist Soviets, 60, 70 years ago, would torture people. They would torture people's children. They would force confessions. But they never publicly admitted it and tried to sell it to their population as a good thing. The Nazis tortured and murdered people in mass. They tortured people's wives and children in front of them to get false confessions. But they never publicly admitted it, even in their kangaroo courts. Only the arrogant social engineers that run this nation, people like John Yu, people like Alberto Gonzalez, people like Barack Obama, who is continuing and expanding rendition and secret arrest and secret black sites all over the world. They are the only ones who in history have said that torturing children is a good thing. They are attempting to literally twist the minds of the people, to, to baptize us in pure black-hearted murder and corruption so that this entire system of Northcom homeland security oppression that we were sold as a bill of goods, just like Hitler, oh, it's for a minority, it's for people that wear turbans, it's for people thousands of miles away in a cave. But when we got the homeland security and PNAC documents last year from law enforcement, it showed us what we already knew, but proved it. The entire system is focused on activists, anti-war activists, anti-GMO food activists, Second Amendment activists, libertarians, anti-war activists, returning veterans, former police, anyone that has any skills is targeted by this secret police network that the system is attempting to roll out against us. But the good news is, in every poll, in every focus group, and by every indicator we've got, this has only caused the people who were on the fence and who were in denial to finally wake up and realize just how dire our straits are. Because yes, the people are beginning to wake up, but the system is coming in like a flood against us and attempting to fully break our will, and to capture the United States as an engine of global domination. And for anyone who studied history, when you have an empire, a regional empire or a global empire, take Rome 2,000 years ago, the most oppressed people in that system are those living in the heart of the empire. And they use our primitive instincts to be threatened by outsiders, to sell us on uh, primitively turning off our thinking process and going along with this evil. But in the final equation, it is a life and death situation. 
And there couldn't be a more serious issue to face than an empire who writes policy reports for PNAC, Dick Cheney and others, September 2000, uh, amongst others. You have Zbigniew Brzezinski running much of the policies for Obama, writing two books, one of them the Grand Chessboard, saying if we don't have a large Pearl Harbor event, we're not going to be able to mobilize our people to launch all of these new wars for this Pax Americana. But even if you were a evil servant of the empire, you need to understand that in this empire, you will be targeted just as much or more than outsiders. So when we hear about a Pax Americana, it's not even a Pax Americana. This is not being done for our nation. This is being done for offshore private banks that control the United Nations, that control our Pentagon, that control our Congress, and who are seeking to solidify their hold on the planet so they can go ahead with the next phase in their operation. And if you think the tyranny you've seen so far has been bad, the next phase will make this pale in significance. Some of the points I wanted to go over here are basically the history of government-sponsored terror. And I know that most of you are fully aware of this, but for people watching this later on hundreds of different video channels, on the web, uh, on YouTube, and on other channels, you're going to hear some architects, some engineers get into the Twin Towers and the clear evidence that there was a top-down controlled demolition, that Building 7 was blown up with a classical controlled demolition, and that the federal government and NIST have been forced to change their story five and now a sixth time, and that they can't even explain why these towers fell. And that's very important from a scientific perspective because that's something that professionals physicists, architects, engineers can really sink their teeth into. But there's other areas of evidence that I wanted to speak about today, and that is the absolute 100% fact that throughout history, governments have staged terror time and time again. And for viewers watching out there on the internet later, I want to challenge you to Go read mainline history books on Rome, which was the model of imperial control when Rome collapsed in 410 throughout the Dark Ages and then even into the modern Enlightenment and where we are today. The Romans would routinely, and then many years later they would write about it, they would brag about it, they would write manuals on how they had done it. They would routinely stage massacres and kill everyone on an outlying village on the edge of the empire as a pretext to then propagandize local tribes uh, to fall in behind their legions and support them. But there were even uh, more classical cases of false flag staged events by the Romans. Uh, if you go to uh, the history books and read about some of the uh, most powerful families in Rome, in fact, Julius Caesar's uh, family, they were involved in the city of Rome and surrounding areas in fire insurance. And they would uh, come to the local uh, patrons uh, at businesses, uh, to, to the different neighborhoods, to the Jewish neighborhoods, to the Greek neighborhoods, to the Roman neighborhoods, and they would say, you need to support our fire department. And if you don't support our fire department, we are going to burn down your neighborhood. You may have heard of this a couple thousand years later with the Italian Mafia. Well documented, comes to your grocery store or your cleaners or your business and says, if you don't pay us protection money and hire some of my boys to work here, then somebody's going to burn your business down. And so this is a repeat. This is what false flag terror is. This is a Mafia system of control. And I used, of course, the example of the Roman Empire and the Italian Mafia, but every Mafia operates through the same extortion rules. And that's exactly what's happening today. Of course, there are well-documented cases of the Nazis using false flag terror. In 1939, on the eve of the attack uh, on Poland, it had already been predetermined uh, with Stalin that they would divide the country. How was Hitler going to get the German people, who had been told that they were just building up this big military to defend Germany, how were the Germans, who didn't like war after World War I, how were they going to be uh, seduced into, into attacking uh, Poland and then launching World War II. 
Well, this was done by the German military taking some people from a local camp, dressing them up in Polish uniforms, shooting them, killing them, shooting newsreel footage of it, and putting it in the movie theaters and on the radio that Poland, who had an antiquated, really pre-World War I army on horseback, had supposedly just attacked, at the time, the most powerful military in the world. That was Leibniz. Then, of course, you know about Hitler and the Reichstag and grabbing the mentally ill uh, Marinus van der Lubbe off the street and blaming it on him. And now European courts have gone to the annals last year and officially said, yes, the conspiracy theorists were right. Hermann Goering firebombed the German Capitol building. And again, here's the problem. There are over 200 that I've identified that are declassified examples in the last 60 years that our government has staged. There's the 1980 Bologna bombing. That's been all over the Italian newspapers. Their former presidents have come out. Their former head of intelligence has come out. Every time a political party that wasn't inside the power structure, whether it be a right-wing party or a communist party, they targeted both, but mainly the communists in Italy, every time that they were really starting to get some headway with the public, the establishment would stage terror attacks. Their favorite was train stations, school buses, police stations, military bases, so that they could then demonize that group. And of course, we've seen countless examples of this. Uh, you look at uh, Operation Ajax, Mohammed Mosaddegh, 1953, Iran. Mohammed Mosaddegh was pro-Western, Time Magazine Man of the Year. He just wanted to build up and industrialize Iran. Uh, he was uh, much more secular than any other leader they'd ever had. Uh, he wanted to be friends with everybody. And so we see the birth of the modern Al-Qaeda. The CIA, led by Kermit Roosevelt, this is now completely declassified. Uh, in fact, it was declassified more than 20 years ago, but I couldn't believe it a couple years ago when I heard Kermit Roosevelt, an old audio tape of him on NPR, bragging how they did it. And so working with MI6 and CIA, Kermit Roosevelt went in and blew up mosques, shot people in the street, and handed out hundreds of thousands of handbills saying, I am Mohammed Mosaddegh, let's kick the radical Muslims out of Iran. We don't want them here. And so then the government used the radical Muslims buying into it, going crazy, killing people in the streets, shooting police, shooting military, as an excuse for the military to come in with the Shah and say, okay, we're going to fix this for you. We're going to set up a police state. And that leads us into another issue. Our government, over and over again, every chance they get, doesn't want to put an elected person into power doesn't want to build up other nations, whether it's in Asia, Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, it doesn't matter. In every case, the people that run our government, the cold-blooded, great game calculators, in every case, they put in dictators, they put in oligarchs, they put in oppressive systems, they set up Savak torture teams and armies that tortured at least 200,000 people to death. And so my message to you is, if they will do this in Italy, if they will do this in Iran, if they will do this in Argentina, if they will do this anywhere else in the world, will they do it here? And the answer is yes. The criminals that have been in control of our nation for more than 50 years are absolutely cold-blooded and they enjoy what they do. And they love the fact that the public isn't aware that nine times out of ten, or even more often, it is the power structure staging these provocations. Then we fast forward to Operation Northwoods. All of you know about that, but some of the viewers out there may not. Just search engine the term Operation Northwoods. Associated Press, Baltimore Sun, uh, ABC News, the National Security Archives. You can read the whole report. It doesn't just say we'll hijack jets, fire remote control, and crash them. It doesn't just say they'll even stage fake deaths of CIA officers. It doesn't just say they'll bomb Miami and D.C. with plastic explosives. It talks about having U.S. Army forces dressed up like Cubans attack the U.S. Marine Corps base at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and actually kill U.S. soldiers. And it talks about attacking U.S. military bases in D.C., the Pentagon, and grazing troops. You saw a grazing just a few weeks ago, didn't you? And that's what's so amazing about these pathological individuals, is they repeat 
the same thing over and over and over and over. And guess where the shooter who's been missing for months got his gun? From a police lockup in Tennessee. Guess where the guy that shot up the courthouse in Nevada got the same gun? Same place. No record of him ever being in Tennessee. And it just goes on and on. These guys are always on medication. They prop them up. They stage the event. They never release the videotapes. And who did they blame in the Pentagon shooting? Within two hours, really less than two hours, about an hour and five minutes, but within two hours, it was all over the news that he was a 9-11 truther. What happened with Joe Stack? Within two hours of it happening, and I went on the air within one hour of it happening, and I said, they're going to blame this on the Tea Parties. They're going to blame this on uh, Patriot groups. People said, oh, I even saw a blog that went up instantly. I was sent later saying, look at Jones, singer, like on the Tea Parties. They did, and not just the Tea Parties. New York Daily News, Austin American Statesman, and countless other publications blamed Alex Jones. And the London Guardian described it as a black hole, that Austin is this black hole. And this evil media empire that I have, which I don't have an empire, I carry out the trash myself most of the time, and that, that I'm at the center of this great evil. No, we are resisting their evil, and Austin is one of the centers of it, but not because of Alex Jones, because of you. And I realized early on that if I took action, and if I exposed these people, and if I spoke out against corruption, it would have an effect, because history documented that. I had no idea that it would have an effect fact, this big in my own personal fight. But by joining together and by researching and by becoming more informed, we are unstoppable. And so the message to everyone watching live on the internet right now, or people watching this five years from now, or to the crowd of great truth seekers who are here today, every single one of you needs to see yourselves as a dynamic leader in the front lines for the fight for the heart and soul of humanity for the destiny of the species. And by the way, that's not just words. That's not just words. In the 15 years I've been standing up against corruption and learning along the way, I've made mistakes, I've had successes, but my heart's been in the right place, and I've learned more. And I know how dangerous it is to be in the position I'm in. And how dangerous it is to be in the position that many prominent leaders of 9-11 Truth are. Because the establishment isn't just making fun of us anymore. In internal White House memos, they're saying we're very dangerous because we are actually reaching people. And depending on the poll you look at in the last eight years, between 36% and 84%, Angus and Reid New York Times poll, 2006, 84% believe they're being lied to about the official story. And as 9-11 Truth continues to travel the country and the world and points out that six of the ten commissioners have been all over major newspapers, but just a blurb here, a blurb there, saying we were lied to, this is a fraud, this is a cover-up. As 9-11 Truth takes that memo from the White House, the White House admits it's theirs. It was, they got it through a FOIA request. Imagine what else they've got. That the White House ordered the 9-11 Commission to not investigate 9-11. Think about how damning that is. Because it's been a process in the last eight years, looking at all the evidence, following every rabbit trail, some dead ends, some that go very important places, to a point now that we have a brain trust of people, tens of millions around the world, who are watching and looking and reading and listening inside corporations, inside the Pentagon, inside the halls of Congress and police departments, inside the state houses. To now, we've gotten to the point with the Christmas Day bomber that within a day, Kurt Haskell and his wife, both lawyers, were on that flight from Amsterdam to Detroit. And as soon as they saw the fire start, they didn't hear an explosion. They began to pay attention to what they'd seen. And they thought back and said, wait, a sharp dressed guy brought the underwear bomber up without a passport, without ID, through the naked body scanners, through the security, they have naked body scanners in, in Amsterdam, and got him on the plane, had an argument with him, but basically flashed rank and got him on the plane without an ID, without a passport. And the FBI came to his office, tried to intimidate him and his wife, 
The FBI said he was a liar, and then more witnesses came out and said, oh, we saw the same thing. That they'd seen, once they got off the plane in Detroit, another man, the dog ran up to his back. They found a bomb. They said, everybody's got to get out of here. The FBI said, you didn't see that either. The FBI said, you didn't see someone on the plane the entire flight with a camera trained on the underwear bomb. And then, a month and a half after that, the FBI came out and said, okay, it's true. Somebody else did help him get on the plane, and there was somebody else we arrested, but we're not going to tell you why, and we do think he had help. And then the Undersecretary of the State Department, Mr. Kennedy, gave a press conference to pull it up on C-SPAN online. They've now put their entire archives up. And he said, an unnamed U.S. intelligence agency ordered us to give him a visa and to help him get on the plane. Absolute setup. The underwear bomber thought he was taking part in a drill. And it's the same in every case. Fort Hood, clear evidence that guy was an intelligence asset, thought he was going around flushing out radical Muslims. He was connected to this Aliki guy who's always there in every case setting up all the patsies. They knew for two years he was talking about killing people and they declared national security on all those emails. And there was a drill at Fort Hood that day of a mass shooter. Think about that. It's the same thing every single time. But I go back to the fact that we have eyes and ears everywhere. This time, when they staged an event on an airplane on Christmas Day, 9-11 truthers were on that plane. Kurt Haskell's a 9-11 truther. You want to know why they're so mad and demonizing 9-11 truth and staging events to blame it on us? Because we've got their number. We know they are the terrorists. We know they are staging almost every event, purely staging them. And then every other event, every time I hear about an event, I go investigate it, praying it's a real event. You know, praying it's not the government staging it. Because it's a lot less scary to think there's some random nutballs out killing people than to think the folks running the highway cameras and the police in black masks and the armored vehicles are staging terror attacks. There's this cliche the media always puts out when they call me. National television, print, newspapers, you name it. Oh, Alex, you just want order in the world. You just think it's scary to think random people might get you. So you want to bring order to the universe. So you, you imagine all of this. And I say, what are you talking about? I'm going off the facts, off the proof, off the history. It is much more frightening, much more terrifying at my core to know that I'm being forced because we have no future if we don't, to go up against people that lied about WMDs, killed over a million Iraqis just for oil and weapons sales. That's a lot more scary than uh, going along with the system and just hating Arabs and Muslims and talking about how they're going to kill us all day when the true radical Muslim brigades all over the world throughout history are run by first Hitler and now the CIA and MI6 on record. It is their foreign brigade that they use to go in to secular or to elected governments in the Middle East or Central Asia and to bring them down. That's who Al-Qaeda is, the sword of the New World Order. Damn Al-Qaeda. Damn Al-Qaeda to hell. I'm not going to speak much more because I want to give more time to the architects and engineers, Dr. Bob Bowman, that's coming up. But, again, there's just so many points that we need to make to everyone out there watching and that you need to make to your friends and family. You need to take it to them and show it to them. Dick Cheney, three years ago, and I remember talking to Ray McGovern, former CIA briefer for Reagan and Bush, and he said, on air, the word is they're going to stage a Gulf of Tonkin in the Strait of Hormuz or in the Persian Gulf area south of there as a pretext to go into Iran. And now we know it was green lighted. And Admiral Fox Phelan and others said, I'm not going to be part of it, I'm going to resign. We would have already had a war with Iran that could have been the trigger for World War III. In fact, most of the geopolitical military experts say it would probably go in that direction. Very good chance of it. If a lot of the top brass 
hadn't stood up and said no. That's why, what, a year ago, Admiral Mullen, Joint Chiefs of Staff, went to Israel for the first time ever and in a speech said, we know what happened with the USS Liberty and something like that better not happen again as an attempt to sink that ship to blame it on Egypt. And that could have launched World War III because they had a uh, defense deal with the Russians in 1967. Think about how close we are. And the establishment wants a new war, knowing that you'll accept the banker bailouts, the tyranny, the corruption, that is the general public will, if there's a new war that's been launched. And then it came out a year after that, right before Bush left office, MSNBC, Cy Hirsch, as well, New Yorker magazine, that Cheney indeed, in the White House, had proposed creating fake gunboats, PT boats, blue Iranian boats, to have them attack a U.S. destroyer as a pretext to launch a war against Iran. And Cheney doesn't get in any trouble. And now we have a new book out from annals inside the White House where on 888, Dick Cheney, I guess he didn't want to give up power, wanted to launch a war against Russia. Now, see, these people are insane. They're functioning psychopaths. They, they're sadistic psychopaths. They're very calm, cool, collected, and focused, but they are mentally ill. Imagine Russia, tens of thousands of nuclear weapons, topo limbs, the whole delivery system. This is in Iran. This is in Iraq. And I remember getting up that morning on 888 in 2008, and I turned on CNN, and they said, Russia has attacked Georgia. And, and even Alex Jones two years ago, bought into it for about an hour. I, I mean, I couldn't imagine that they're that bold at lying, that they would get on the news and say, Russia has attacked. And then I went to the BBC and the London Telegraph and to the Russian news, and in every other country, in the Japanese news, it was the truth. It was that overnight, they had gone into the UN-held area, South Ossetia, they tried to get into Abkhazia, and they even had peacekeepers in the bases who would do the old special forces technique and walk right behind the Russian troops and stab them in the back and throw hand grenades in their barracks. And they had the uh, unguided missile batteries firing in. And it was all public that Georgia had launched that war and that Israeli, U.S., and NATO forces were there. And then the announcement was made that NATO forces were going to go in. And the Russians pulled in, rolled in their mobile nukes, and said we're going to, and they had the top Russian general come out and say we're prepared to use nuclear weapons, and then the West backed off. Now again, Russia's corrupt and has all its own problems. I criticize Russia every day. This isn't like, oh, America's good, so we need nuclear war with the Russians. The issue is they think the public is so dumb that they would launch a false flag in plain view, knowing that the world would discover the truth within hours that a premeditated attack was launched by U.S.-backed Georgian forces into a Russian-held area, killing peacekeepers that had been there since 1991. Think of the magnitude of that. And then a week ago, and the, and the APs even reported on this, for those out there watching, on state-controlled TV, they ran a newscast saying Russia had attacked again. And it was just all completely fake. And finally, the Georgians are mad. They're protesting by the tens of thousands, saying this was a false flag staged event, just like 9-11. So now it's a Orson Welles War of the Worlds mind control, where they don't even have to attack Russia and then say that Russia attacked. They just run newscasts saying Russia has attacked to somehow instill fear in the public. That's how dangerous these individuals are that we are facing as a society. That's how evil these individuals are. Their lust for power, they've got all the money, all the women, all the land, all the caviar they can eat. And for them, they love sitting around their electronic maps of the world playing games with our lives like we're their little toys, to borrow a phrase from Bob Dylan. And I'm not their toy. I have a wife and three children. I'm somebody who loves the truth and who loves to stand up against corruption, not because I'm even some wonderful good guy. I, I'm not twisted. I have a basic self-preservation mechanism. I like things to be fair. I know that you need to stand up against corruption. I know you need to stand up against tyranny. Because in every case in history, when you don't stand up against tyranny, it always goes to the extreme. Tyranny doesn't stop. Once you bend to evil, it goes all the way. It happened in Russia. 
It's happened in China. It happened in Germany. It's happened in Cambodia. It's happened in Cuba. It's happening in Venezuela. Hugo Chavez is becoming a bona fide tyrant. His excuse is he's fighting the Western tyrants. And so what you have is globally all these tyrants propping each other up. The excuse of, well, they're tyrants, so we're going to be tyrants. Well, they're tyrants, so we're going to be even greater tyrants. We've got to bodyguard the truth with lies. And the end justifies the means and the noble lie. What, two years ago, a 2004 Pentagon Army manual for captains and above came out. And in there it lists how to stage false flags. If you're having trouble with local insurgents getting too much popularity, stage a massacre, blame it on them. This is standard issue now in our government, just like a canteen and an M16. At captain and above level, if you were compartmentalized in those areas, you were taught how to stage terror attacks. Remember 2006? It was in the London Guardian and the BBC, British SAS, Special Air Services. The combat arm of MI6 was caught dressed up like Muslims running around shooting people on the streets of Basra to get sectarian violence between Shiite and Sunni going. And I could go on and on and on. And until we fully break the back of the 9-11 line, until we expose the Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution, things are only going to get worse. But we are now approaching that tipping point. The system realizes that that the majority of people are starting to question. They're starting to ask who stands to gain, qui bono, from Latin, who benefits. And soon, they're not gonna be able to use this tool anymore, and this is their number one tool and mechanism of control. And so that's why now, before they start shutting down the web, before they stage terror attacks and blaming on 9-11 truth, now is the time for us to be on record that we understand their attack profile, we understand their past operations, and we know what's coming. Just as I, just as I was able to predict two months before 9-11 that they would specifically target the World Trade Center and blame it on their asset, Osama bin Laden, I'm telling you now, as I've been saying for three months, they are going to stage terror attacks and blame it on 9-11 truth. But that isn't something to get scared of when they do it. That is a sign of them failing, of their system falling. And because we're here before it happens, laying out what the enemy's going to do, more people are going to listen to us, and this tool of false flag terror is on the verge of dying. It is hanging on by its fingernails because of all of you. And I salute you, and I thank you for being here, and I want to thank architects and engineers and all their great supporters. 1,100, it'll be 10,000 in a year. You watch. We are never going to stop, and that's the final word. Sure, if you're prominent in this, there's some danger. Danger of demonization, danger of audits, danger of physical attacks, whatever. But freedom and liberty is worth it because it leads to certain destruction to give in to corruption and to bow to it. The safest course is to fight 110%. But for you, the individual, you are safe. And the more people you wake up, the safer you are, safer from the fake terror, safer from the wars that grow out of the fake terror and safer from the jackbooted thugs that they're trying to forge. Because the military and police I'm talking to, in vast numbers, randomly on the street, are becoming fully awake. Freedom is on the march. God bless you all. Thank you for coming out today.